M S W Media. This episode is sponsored by Green Pan, healthy ceramic nonstick cookware. Green Pan is the go-to brand for high-quality, non-toxic, easy-to-clean pots and pans. Head to greenpan.us and use promo code DAILYBEANS and you'll receive 30% off your entire order, plus free shipping on orders over $99. Hello! Welcome to the Daily Beans for Thursday, September 7th, 2023. Today, Fulton County Judge McAfee has denied Kenneth Cheesebro's motion to sever from Sidney Powell. A federal judge has ordered Texas to remove its floating barrier and stop any construction of additional barriers pursuant to a DOJ lawsuit. E. Jean Carroll has won her second defamation suit against Trump with the trial date set to determine damages. Uciel Tavares has signed a cooperation agreement with special counsel Jack Smith's office. Judge Angeron in New York has denied Trump's motion to delay the New York Attorney General's fraud trial, which is set to begin October 2nd. Both sides rest in Pete Navarro's criminal contempt trial with closing arguments scheduled for today. Special counsel David Weiss will attempt to indict Hunter Biden by September 29th on the gun charge. The Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington have sued to keep Trump off the ballot in Colorado under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. A special counsel has filed a professional misconduct complaint against Montana's Republican attorney general. And Leonard Mack has been exonerated by DNA evidence 47 years after his wrongful conviction. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. Holy majoli. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of news. And also my voice is clearly still raspy. So I apologize for that in advance. There's going to be a lot of cracking and, uh, you know. What am I going to do? There's nothing I can do. What can you do? Yeah, I know. Mine... What can you do? It's a little Peter Brady at moments. <laughs> Changes. Yeah, no, mine too. Uh, <laughs> it's um, it's getting rasp. It's getting more Kathleen Turner uh, as we go. Oh, let's see. That's nice. <laughs> as, yeah. we, as we go. Um, but this is so much news. I mean, I think we set a record. Is this how it's going to be from now on? My God. I think it probably is, actually. I think it's going to ramp up even more next year. So just seatbelt it in, everybody. Put your seatbelts on. Yeah, we actually have a whole new section now, probably, called Quick Hits, which let's get to that. Yeah. First up, Judge McAfee has denied Kenneth Cheesebro's motion to sever from Sidney Powell in Fulton County, meaning both of them will go to trial on October 23rd together. Future filings to sever for people who want a speedy trial will be considered on a case-by-case basis, but a huge win for the Fulton County DA's office. Pete Strzok and I will go over the other details of the hearing on cleanup on aisle 45 next week. Okay, and CNN reported today that the IT guy, Trump employee number four, Yusil Tavares, has struck a plea agreement with special counsel Jack Smith's office and is cooperating in exchange for immunity from charges. This is a big (laughs) fucking deal. Allison, you and Andy McCabe, you're going to cover that on the next episode of Jack, so make sure you tune into that one. And we head up to New York, where Judge Engeron has denied Donald Trump's motion to delay his October 2nd fraud case brought by New York Attorney General Tish James. The judge made this decision in a handwritten note on Trump's motion to delay, and all the note reads is, decline to sign, defendant's arguments are completely without merit. (laughs) Oh, man. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And both the prosecution and the defense have rested their cases in the criminal contempt trial of Pete Navarro. Now, closing arguments happen Thursday, and then the jury is going to deliberate. In the Bannon contempt trial, the jury only deliberated for 2.5 hours. So we might actually have a verdict by the time you listen to this podcast. (laughs) And Allison, you're going to cover this more on Clean Up in Aisle 45. Me and Pete. Pete Strzok, not Pete Navarro. But we'll be talking about no. it. P- P- Navarro's very busy getting heckled by the same woman over and I over. I love over. that. So she's like blowing the whistle every time he's trying to raise money. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then so that other funny. guy's like, come on, man, let him talk. And she's like, fuck no, bro. And then she p- puts up a different sign. Like she pulls out a sign from behind her sign. 
holds it up. So good. She's she so is. good. If you get a chance to see that. She reminds me of that woman that the flipped off the Trump motor. Yes. And then, of course, she's standing there and Pete Navarro's she's blowing the whistle. And then all of a sudden, the guy, you know, the, the guy with the white beard and the sunglasses, it just has the traitor sign. He comes up and yeah. holds up a sign that says coup and then just walks away. It's so, so, so funny. good. Uh, All right. In a status update, special counsel David Weiss, who was appointed by Barr five years ago to investigate Hunter Biden, says he plans on bringing an indictment against Hunter for the gun charge by September 29th. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals recently ruled that that law is unconstitutional. So we'll see how that goes for David Weiss or whether a grand jury votes for an indictment at all. All right. The last one in the quick hits is also a good news story. A federal judge ordered Texas to remove floating barriers in the Rio Grande and barred the state from building new or placing additional buoys in the river. And that's according to a Wednesday court filing marking a victory for the Biden administration. Judge David Allen Ezra ordered Texas to take down the barriers by September 15th at their own (laughs) expense. Texas is going to have to pay for that (laughs) shit. Sorry, Abbott. But not sorry. Uh, fuck around, find out. All right, those are the quick hits, y'all. Let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. First up from Aaron Katersky at ABC, a federal judge in New York on Wednesday granted writer E. Jean Carroll's motion for partial summary judgment in her 2019 defamation case against the former guy. E. Jean Carroll, as we know, former Elle magazine columnist, sued Trump in 2019 over his defamatory statements the ones that he made while he was president, in which he said she was not my type and called her a liar, denying that he raped her in a Manhattan department store in the 90s. This past May, Carol won a related second case, accusing Trump of battery and defamation based on a 2022 statement Trump made, in which he accused her of lying. Jury members found that Trump did not rape Carol technically, but sexually abused her and awarded her a total of $5 million. Now, the judge has since written that while the jury found that under the statute in New York, technically he didn't rape her, uh, but he did in common vernacular. So she can say that he raped, um, he raped me, but uh, you know, that's, you know, in many States, that is the definition uh, by law, just not in New York, but in vernacular, it's, it's not wrong. Uh, And, and the judge wrote that Trump did rape her, that she can say that that's not defamation. On Wednesday, a judge ruled that based on the outcome of the second case, this is Judge Kaplan, the next trial scheduled to begin in January will only deal with the amount of damages that Carol deserves because the earlier jury already affirmed Trump did indeed defame her. The comments were the same. Quote, first, it is found by a preponderance of the evidence that Trump sexually abused Miss Carol. Second, it's determined by clear and convincing evidence that Mr. Trump's 2022 statement was false. And accordingly, given that the substantive content of the 2022 statement, which the jury in Carroll 2 found to be defamatory, is identical to the substantive content of Trump's 2019 statements. Um, So the jury's findings in Carroll 2 is controlling in this case, meaning you already found that he lied. He said the exact same thing in 2019 that he did in 2022. We don't need to prove this case that it's we don't have to prove it's defamation. So we just go to trial for damages. It's a lot like the Ruby Freeman Shea Moss defamation case against Rudy, where for because of severe sanctions and his failure to hand over discovery, the judge said, you win. We just need to go to trial to determine the damages. Now, Trump is appealing the verdict in the earlier case. Uh, After New York Magazine published Carol's rape accusation in 2019, Trump denied meeting her, accusing her of trying to profit from the claim and said she was trying to carry out a political agenda. Uh, And uh, Trump argued that any damages awarded in this next trial ought to be limited to $5 million because that's what was awarded in the first case. And the judge said, nope, Uh, quote, Mr. Trump's contention thus mixes apples with oranges. Nope, you don't get to make that argument. So big congrats to our friend E. Jean. May she take him to the cleaners. Indeed. All right. Also from ABC News, AG, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics, otherwise known as CREW, which is a Washington-based watchdog group, on Wednesday filed a suit on behalf of a handful of voters seeking to bar Donald Trump from the 2024 ballot in Colorado under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment based on his alleged involvement in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. This is kind of brilliant. The suit, quickly dismissed, of course, by the Trump's team, marks one of the first serious challenges to his qualifications as a presidential candidate based on a 14th Amendment argument. 
Well, Section 3 states that someone isn't eligible for future office if, while they were previously in office, they took an oath to support the Constitution, but then, and I quote, engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or gave aid or comfort to the enemies thereof, unless they are granted amnesty by a two-thirds vote of Congress. Now, supporters of this theory argue this applies to Trump because of his conduct after he lost the 2020 election, but sought to reverse the results. Now, previous such efforts focused on other Republicans have failed, but Crew last year successfully pushed to remove a county official in New Mexico who was convicted of trespassing in connection with the attack on the Capitol, which was awesome. Yeah. Wednesday's suit against Trump was filed with Cruz attorneys by six Republican and unaffiliated Colorado voters, including former state, federal and local officials. You hear that? Six Republican. Now, the suit accuses Trump of inciting and aiding the mob that stormed the Capitol two years ago. He was previously impeached, as we know, by the House of Representatives for the same, but he was acquitted by the Senate. And he has repeatedly maintained that he did not incite the writers. And we've repeatedly seen him do it. (laughs) Now, crew president Noah Bookbinder, he said that the organization is bringing the lawsuit because, and I quote, it is necessary to defend our republic both today and in the future. Trump has denied all wrongdoing and calls the efforts to disqualify him under the 14th Amendment election interference. It's not. A broader campaign is emerging to keep Trump from the ballot next year because of the 14th Amendment. John Anthony Castro. He's running for the GOP presidential nomination as a write-in candidate. He's filed and docketed 14th Amendment cases in multiple states. Really interesting. Now, Senator Tim Kaine, who, as we know, is a Democrat in Virginia, he acknowledged the brewing battle during an appearance Sunday on ABC's This Week. And he said, my sense is it's probably going to get resolved in the courts. Well, Colorado Secretary of State, that's Griswold. She's a Democrat, as we know. She said in her own statement, I look forward to the Colorado courts of substantive resolution of the issues, and I'm hopeful that this case will provide guidance to election officials on Trump's eligibility as a candidate for office. Now, a news release from Griswold's office also outlined their view of how Colorado law is unclear on how to consider the requirements of the U.S. Constitution in determining a candidate's eligibility. Currently, no candidates have qualified for the presidential primary ballot in Colorado, and that's according to Griswold's office. Griswold, in her role as the state's chief elections official, is named as the defendant in the crew lawsuit along with Trump, which is really interesting. Mm. I think it's mostly the office. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. She, and, you know, she's looking forward to see how this plays out in the courts because she says that the law is unclear. And there was a, a recent case dismissed because the, the, the plaintiffs didn't have standing. These plaintiffs have standing. So we'll see how this goes for them. And from Seaborn Larson at the Helena Independent Record, Montana's special counsel for the office charged with disciplining lawyers on Tuesday, filed 41 counts of alleged professional misconduct against the Republican Attorney General, Austin Knudsen. Uh, it's, a, it's a bad week for Republican <laughs> Attorneys General. Special Counsel Timothy Strouch did not return a call late Tuesday seeking comment on the filing. Uh, he filed this with the Montana Office of Disciplinary Counsel, and that is a court-appointed body overseen by the Montana Supreme Court. The complaint, which is publicly available, I highly recommend you read it, It's on the state Supreme Court's docket website. It requests an adjudicatory panel from the commission be formed to hear the allegations and forward a recommendation to the Montana Supreme Court for possible disciplinary action of the attorney general in Montana. A spokesperson for the attorney general's office denounced the allegations called them meritless. Quote, the attorney general looks forward to filing his response with the commission. This is from spokesperson Emily Cantrell in an email late Tuesday. She went on to say, quote, The allegations are meritless. They stem from a legitimate dispute between two branches of government. No one should be prosecuted for holding a different opinion than those in power, unquote. Now, at its core, the complaint alleges that the attorney general violated the Montana rules of professional conduct intended to preserve public confidence in the fairness and the impartiality of the judicial system in the state. Quote, contrary to these ethical precepts, uh, this is what uh, Strouch wrote in the complaint, quote, Knudsen and lawyers under his supervision routinely and frequently undermined public confidence in the fairness and impartiality of our system of justice by attempting to evade the authority of the Montana Supreme Court and then assaulting the integrity of the judiciary and the individual justices who were duly elected by citizens to make decisions. Because of this misconduct, 
the public may be led to question whether the judicial system itself is worthy of respect. Now, the 41 counts in the complaint draw from eight documents, court filings, or letters from the Attorney General's office over the course of the so-called McLaughlin case, when the conflict between state Republicans and the judicial branch was at its peak. The 41 alleged violations begin in April of 2021, four months after Knudsen took office, and when the conflict between Republican-controlled branches of state government got underway with the judiciary. They started going back and forth. That case, the McLaughlin case, began as a challenge to a new law that gave the governor broader power to appoint judges and spawned a separate dispute about judges taking internal polls on pending legislation to determine if the judges support or oppose the bills. Now, Republican lawmakers subpoenaed over 5,000 emails from the Montana Supreme Court administrator, Beth McLaughlin, that's why it's called the McLaughlin case, and the Supreme Court ordered that subpoena be shut down. So, very interesting. Then Lieutenant General Kristen Hansen rejected the order in an open letter representing legislators at the time. Quote, the legislature does not recognize this court's order as binding and will not abide by it. Who? Now, Hansen has, has since uh, passed away, but this is uh, what she wrote. She wrote, the legislature will not entertain the court's interference in the legislature's investigation of the serious and troubling conduct of members of the judiciary. Now, over time, the Montana Supreme Court upheld the law at the genesis of the conflict, but Republicans kept pushing, forming an investigative commission, subpoenaing all seven Supreme Court justices to appear at a hearing. The state's high court pushed back, calling the legislative probe overreach and an attempt to undercut the public confidence in the branch. So we'll see what happens with this particular case. Wow. Amazing. All right, AG, this is from CBS News. And this is also a good news story to go into our good news block later. A New York man was officially exonerated on Tuesday, 47 years after he was found guilty of rape in 1976. This is the longest standing wrongful conviction to be overturned based on new DNA evidence in the U.S. history, in U.S. history. This is from the organization directly. Now, a DNA hit conclusively excluded Leonard Mack. He's 72 years old as the perpetrator. Westchester County District Attorney Miriam Roca. That's what she said in a statement. Now, conviction review unit investigators identified a convicted sex offender after they ran the DNA through databases, and the DA's office said the individual has now confessed to the rape. This poor man, 47 years. And this is a quote from the story. This exoneration confirms that wrongful convictions are not only harmful to the wrongly convicted, but also make us all less safe. So Roca said, and she's right, Mac, who served seven and a half years in prison for the crime, said, I never lost hope that one day that I would be proven innocent. Seven years, seven years in prison, seven and a half. On May 22nd, 1975, police pulled over Mac in Greensboro, New York, two and a half hours after two teenage girls were stopped as they were walking home from school. One teen was violently raped. The other teen broke free and ran to a nearby school where a teacher called the police. Now, the attack happened in a predominantly white neighborhood. The Greensboro Police Department had put out a call for a black male suspect in his early 20s. Mac, who is black, was driving through the neighborhood at the time, and even though he was wearing different color clothing than the suspect and had an alibi, he was brought into the police station. The Innocence Project. Great organization, by the way, great project, said racial bias was a factor in police honing in on Mac and not investigating other potential suspects. Black Americans are more than seven times more likely to be convicted of a serious crime and then exonerated than white Americans. Research found this in 2022, the National Registry of Exonerations report. The Death Penalty Information Center found that exonerations of black people for murder convictions are 22 percent more likely to be linked to the police misconduct. Now, victims identified Mac in a series of problematic identification procedures, said this is from the Innocence Project, explaining that victims were led through different photo arrays and lineups in which the material wrongly suggested Mac was the perpetrator. Eyewitness misidentification is the leading cause of wrongful convictions, with 70% of wrongful convictions happening due to witnesses picking out the wrong perpetrator. The Innocence Project said eyewitness misidentification has contributed to 64% of their 245 exonerations and releases. They've done this with 245 cases. Amazing. 
Now, at the trial, prosecutors presented flawed forensic testimony. This is what the Innocence Project said. The medical examiner tested crime scene evidence at the time and found Mac was not a match. But prosecutors didn't present this information at trial and instead uh, rebutted the findings and cast doubt upon them. That's again from the Innocence Project. Susan Friedman, and she's a senior staff attorney at the Innocence Project who represents Mac, told CBS News, and this is a quote, considering the unreliability of the witness identifications and the forensic evidence, the state's decision to continue the prosecution instead of reopening the investigation demonstrates the power of tunnel vision and the role that racial bias plays in the criminal legal system. Couldn't have said that better, by the way. In 2022, the Innocence Project approached the district attorney's office for assistance. Now, the victim's underwear, the underwear cuttings were sent to the lab for modern DNA testing. And after determining that Mac wasn't the perpetrator, a hit in the DNA database led them to a habitual sexual offender. And this is, goes back to like it makes us more unsafe when there's a wrongful conviction. That individual was convicted of burglary and rape in Queens that occurred weeks after this original crime we've been talking about. He also had a 2004 conviction for burglary and sexual assault of a woman in Westchester County. And again, this is all from the Innocence Project. Mac, who has been living in South Carolina with his wife for 21 years, said, now the truth has come to light and I can finally breathe. I am finally free. 47 years later. Wow. Thanks so much to Mimi Roca and the Innocence Project for the incredible work on that case, exonerating him. Yeah. All right, next up, we have the good news, but we have to take a quick break. Everybody stick around. We'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Nothing ruins a perfect cooking session faster than food sticking to the pan. This is a common plight I was all too familiar with. It made me think I was a bad cook. That was until Green Pan solved my problems. With over 150 patents under their belt, Green Pan is the foremost innovator in ceramic nonstick cookware. They took the industry by storm in 2007 when they discovered traditional nonstick pans have harmful, heat-activated plastic coatings. Determined to provide a healthier option, they crafted an alternative without these forever chemicals, paving the way for a truly PFAS-free, toxin-free cookware. So the charm of this pan doesn't stop at its nonstick features or the lack of toxic fumes. It also distributes heat evenly. So for you, 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 I am such a better, I'm a much better cook with these pans because of the heat distribution and it facilitates an effortless cleanup and it pr- promotes healthier cooking because I don't have to use as much butter or oil. And as a health enthusiast, discovering green pan has been a blessing. Knowing that I'm cooking on a surface free from harmful substances is truly comforting. I've recommended it to all my health conscious friends. Green pan also goes beyond standard cookware. They offer an array of kitchen appliances, bakeware, and premium cutlery. So you can outfit your whole kitchen and you have ample time to decide if it's the right fit for you because they have a 60 day return policy. Once you go green pan, you will never look back. So toss those plastic pans and upgrade your cookware with green pan. Head to greenpan.us, use promo code daily beans, and you'll receive 30% off your entire order plus free shipping on orders over $99. That's right. Whether you buy one pan or the whole set, that's 30% off. So head to greenpan.us and make sure you use our promo code daily beans to let them know we sent you. Welcome back to our studio where we have a special guest with us today, Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops. Toucan Sam, welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. Oh, and um, it's Fruit Loops, just so you know. Uh, fruit? Fruit. Yeah, fruit. No, it's Fruit Loops. The same way you say studio. That's not how we say it. Fruit Loops, find the loopy side. It's no surprise that newsmakers try to manipulate the audience. They want you to believe that they are the one holding the line and they'll use any trick they can to get you there. But don't let them fool you. Get unspun. I'm Amanda Sturgill. I've been a reporter, and today I teach future reporters to cut the spin and think critically about what newsmakers say. My podcast, Unspun, shows you how to know when you're being manipulated by the news. Learn to spot the tricks and how to make up your own mind about what's true. So if you're tired of being fooled by the news, subscribe to Unspun today. Unspun, because you deserve the truth. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news?
near, near. Good news, good news. And if you have any good news, confessions, corrections, if you want to play What the Mutt, What the Hakwine, uh, Baby Pictures for Dana, um, or, you know, Frog Orgy Photos for me. I told you Dana would come back and she wants those baby yes, pictures. Yes, please. <laughs> so uh, a shout out to a loved one. Shout out to an adoptable pet in your area. If you don't have pod pet tax, a shout out to yourself. Tell me what you're doing. Or Whoopi Stories or Misheard Song Lyrics. Whatever you have. Send it to us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. First up from John G. Uh, I just want to state for the record that in and around our little lake in Connecticut, mallards do occasionally come out of the sky and simply stand there. I will never hear the song Roundabout again without conjuring an image like this one. God bless you, ladies. Peace, love, and beans. Ooh, I love peace, love, and beans. I love that. You should sell that shirt. Peace, love, and I'm writing it down. <laughs> Beans. All right. Thank you so much for that submission. All right. This is from Stacy. pronouns she and her. Five short years ago, I moved from a very red state to a nice blue state, leaving my lovely friends behind. Save for my small family, which included a college student and teen with a husband that traveled. I knew no one. I was so very lonely and had yet to meet people and bam, COVID hit, leaving me more without others to interact with. Thank goodness that I left two very good like-minded friends behind who helped to keep me sane and move moving forward. Now, even though several hundred of miles apart, our days are spent playing a daily word game, talking about our lives and discussing that day's beans. I don't know what I would do without them. Lori and Libby, this is a shout out to you. And because I cannot wait for the big orange to encounter justice, I crafted a mugshot using his favorite profile picture. And to get that taste out of your mouth, a photo of my grand dog, Deli Bean, otherwise known as Delta. You can probably guess what breed she is. Oh, yeah. Delta's a Dalmatian. Definitely. Look at that sploot. I love that. Sun's out, pup's out. So cute. Okay. I like your mugshot way better. Um, although I think he is prisoner PO11358809. Why do I know that by heart? Because... Oh, it's I sing it to the tune of eight six seven five three zero nine. That's that's hysterical, that's, Ag. Uh, thank you for that submission, and I love your Dalmatian, Stacy. And hi, Lori and Libby. Shout out to you, blue dots in that red state. Thanks for discussing the beans with your friends. All right, next up from Jen, pronoun she and her, ladies of the beans. Thanks for all the hard work you do on the show. I always enjoy your good news, and I got excited today when I had reason to write in and share. My family adopted a stray cat today, and I want to give a shout out to the Regional Animal Services of King County. King County includes Seattle. They are doing amazing work, not only rehoming animals, but also providing pet food to folks who otherwise might not be able to afford to keep their pet. They are really in need of more people to adopt right now. So if you're in King County and considering adding a pet to your family, check out their website, Pet Tax Photo Attached Obvi. Thank you again for your hard work. I appreciate the Beans Jack and Clean Up podcast so much. Please vote everyone. Look at this beautiful gray and white tabby baby. So sweet. With the green eyes. Congratulations so, so on your sweet. new family member, Jen. And everybody in King County, they need people to adopt. So if you're if you're free and you want a pod pet to pay tax with, head up to Regional Animal Services of King County. All right, A.G., thank you. Oh. This next one's from Joshua, pronouns he and him. I know. <laughs> now, I love to shout out my wife, Katie. She's a mother of six boys under 15 oh and has been a S-A-H-M. Do you know what that uh, is? Let's keep reading. Maybe oh, stay, stay at home mom. Home. Stay at home mom. There we go. Since it just took me a second, people, uh, give me time and I'll I know. We're like, we're like <laughs> the <laughs> childless heathens. We're like S-A-H-M. What could that possibly be? I'm not sure. Yeah, Maybe keep reading and we'll get at... a hint later. <laughs> <laughs> She's been a stay-at-home mom since her first born. She recently took a job at a preschool well under her qualifications that would allow all of our boys to go to the same charter school in Florida. This is an incredible opportunity for them and sacrifice for her. She has two bachelor degrees and is a registered dietitian nutritionist, but took this position for what it will do for our boys. This woman is incredible. I'm so thankful for her being in my life. She's worked for the past six years to go back to school for a second bachelor's in science. The first one was in business to allow her to enroll in the dietitian program, followed by a nine month internship while preggers with our sixth. What a woman. Thanks to you both for the work you do every day and bringing us a concise news update. And look at this. I can only assume it's a labradoodle. I know. Oh my God. It's so he cute. Eyes. He's looking into my soul. 
He's perfect. Oh, and there's a puppy photo. Oh, thank you so much. And Katie, wow, six boys under 15. Whew, good on you. That's, that's amazing. I, so, I like... All the stuff that she did where she's pregnant with the six, nine month internship, mm-hmm. second bachelor's, like, oh my God. It's a lot. Joshua, you lucked out. Thanks so much, Katie. And thanks for the shout out, Josh. Next up from Terry, pronoun she and her. Hiya, I'm sending a shout out to my incredible partner, Lori, who just retired after 30 years of being a family child care provider. Wow. Her practice of compassionate, respectful, loving care of infants and toddlers and their parents has been such a gift to the community, and I'm so proud of her. Also thrilled to have our house transformed to adult mode after all these years. Awesome. Uh, Including a photo of her and our beloved Liza Jane, aged 14 and a half, being very chill at the party, and a portrait of her on black velvet. Look at this pupper and Aww. look at the black velvet photo painting. Oh my gosh. That's so fantastic. Adorable. Oh, I love the velvet painting. The right? cape. That is so fantastic. good. Fantastic. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm going to close this out with this tiny okay. one. This is from <gasps> Grandpa Bill. No pronouns given. My daughter, Molly, who edits Jack. Oh, <gasps> who edits Jack and Clean Up on Aisle 45, introduced me to your exceptional shows. My good news is that at age 92, I get to play with Molly's baby every day. He's the light of my life. Grandpa Bill, the fact that you're 92, by the way, is in this photo, it's phenomenal. Mazel tough. Let's hope we get a lot more years out of you. And you have an incredible daughter. Yeah, you look my age, first of all, Grandpa Bill. <laughs> Molly, one of our incredible... Uh, editors and sound producers here at uh, MSW Media. She does edit the Jack podcast and clean up on L45. And uh, I absolutely love this photo. And Molly's baby is adorable. Congratulations, Grandpa Bill. Thanks for the write-in. That's so cool. So good. Oh, man. I'm like, all, I'm all tinkle, tinkle pink now. Hee <laughs> hee. That's so cute. Baby. Oh, look at him. That, that, so that blonde sweet. hair. I know. So good. So good. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for these submissions. Thanks. Molly's grandpa. That's so cool. I appreciate everybody writing in and and giving the shout outs and the pod pet picks and and, uh, all of the amazing things that you or your loved one is uh, is doing. Thank you so much. It's so inspirational. I can't I just like I can't say enough about it. Uh, whew, let's see. Tomorrow is the Friday news. I wonder what the news dump will be like. We had a record. I know. <laughs> we're going to get that verdict. I know it. We're going <laughs> to get that Navarro verdict. Cause... Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> They're going to be done. What What is your over under? Because like I said, Bannon was two and a half hours, like you reported. That's how long his yeah. jury was deliberating for. How long do you think this one will go? Navarro's, I'm going to say six. You're going to say six? I'm going to say yeah. less than two and a half hours. Oh. I think we will get, I think they'll be done with closing arguments uh, and then come back after lunch, maybe, maybe even earlier. And I think that the jury will have a verdict before the court closes. Tomorrow. Shit. All right. <laughs> That's just my beans. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's, it, believe it or not, this, this case is even more open and shut than Bannon's. So anyway, um, do you have any final thoughts before we get out of here today, my friend? I do not, my friend. All right. Well, everybody, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q. And take everyone and your parents with you. Everyone. Absolutely everybody. Virginia, all eyes on you. You got those elections coming up. I've been AG. And I've been DG. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. Welcome back to our studio, where we have a special guest with us today, Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops. Toucan Sam, welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. Oh, and um, it's Fruit Loops, just so you know. Uh, fruit? Fruit. Yeah, fruit. No, it's Fruit Loops. The same way you say studio. That's not how we say it. 
Fruit Loops, find the loopy side. When's the last time you didn't feel enough? If you relate to this question, you want to check out our podcast, Authentically Us. Yes, guys. Our podcast, Authentically Us, is where we talk about what it means to be authentic in everything that you do, in every space that you occupy. Tony and I created this podcast to create a space um, to talk about just who we are, our experiences, and just things that we are going through. Yes. So come join us with the journey as we figure out what it means to be authentic together.